In this video I'm going to show you how to create tasks for Shopify within Sol. So first you're going to want a Shopify task group, so click the new task group button and select Shopify as the site. You can name this task group whatever you want, however I suggest doing it dependent on the release you're going for, just so you can keep track in the left hand column. Click create group and then you've got a Shopify task group. To begin creating tasks for this group, click the task creator button and you'll have these inputs come up. First enter the site. You can enter the site from this drop down list. You can also begin typing to narrow down results. If the site you want to run for is Shopify but isn't in this drop down list, you can select the custom Shopify and then this option will appear for site URL. In this you just put the base site URL of the site that you'll be running for. So in the example of Kith, it would just be kith.com. Obviously you wouldn't actually run Kith as custom as it's there, but if Kith wasn't in the drop down list, this is how the site URL would be entered. As the test I'm going to do now is on Kith, I'm just going to select Kith. Next is keywords. In this you can enter the keywords or URL or variants of the item you're going for. Keywords will be posted in the Discord, however you can make them yourself. For example, for this item here, I would just use keywords from the title, such as Kith, BMW, Dimensions. You can enter these keywords simply separated by a comma, so in this it would be BMW, Dimensions. You can also make use of negative keywords for if you want to not pick up certain items. So for example, if I wanted an off-white Jordan, I might type in off-white Jordan. But if I wanted to make sure it wasn't a toddler version, I could type in minus toddler. This means it will be going for an off-white Jordan, but it can't have toddler in the title. You can also use a direct link. This will be mostly used if the item has already dropped, such as this item that's already on the site. Simply take the direct URL and paste it in here. The third option you can use is variants. I won't show you how to get variants, but this would usually be used after a release if you're running for restocks. Next is size. Simply choose a size you want to go for. You can choose random. One size, which is useful for if there is no sizing, such as an accessory. The smallest that's in stock, the largest that's in stock, or clothing and shoe sizes. You can select multiple sizes by ticking them, or just select one single one. Next is the checkout mode. First is auto checkout. This is the normal checkout mode. This is mostly used for sites with a password page, such as Dover Street Market. And this is just the usual request based auto checkout mode. Second is pre cart. This is used for sites that don't use a password page, so you would use this on a normal release on Kith. This carts an item that's already on the site before the release and then switches it for the product you're going for at the release. The aim is that it helps to bypass the Shopify queue. Third is Discord Checkout. This will cart the item, but then send a checkout to your Discord webhook for you to complete the checkout manually. So you'll need to set up your webhook in the settings page if you wish to use the Discord Checkout option. If you don't know how to do so, head to the Settings tab video and how to get your webhook is explained there. The final option is PayPal. This is similar to Discord where it'll just cart the item, but then a PayPal browser will appear and you'll be able to check out and finalize the checkout manually by entering your PayPal details. Next is account. For most Shopify sites, you don't require an account, so you'll leave this as none, but certain Shopify sites require an account to check out, such as Undefeated and Concepts. So you'll have to load accounts for these sites that require them first in the Accounts tab. Again, if you don't know how to do that, visit the Accounts video, and then you can select the account list here. Next is Question. Most Shopify sites as well do not use a question, however some require you to answer a question to be able to add to cart. They use this to try and combat bots. So most of the time you'll leave this as none as there will be no, no question. However for some sites such as Haven they use a question so you will enter manual here. This means you'll be manually answering the question. If you're doing this you'll have to make sure you head to the captures tab and open a question harvester. This will allow you to type the answer to the question they ask in the question harvester. The third option is silent. This will hardly ever be used, however recently on the Union Jordan drop they added a question where there wasn't actually a manual question to be answered but it was just silently on the site. So this would hardly ever be used but for very unknown drops such as Union Jordan, silent might be the option you want to go for. Next is proxy list, simply select the proxies that you're going to be using on this task. You'll have to have loaded them beforehand in the proxies tab. If you want to use no proxies, select the top option, no proxy, use localhost. Next is the billing profile. These will show your billing groups and then you can expand billing groups here as you wish to view the profiles within it. You can select all to create a task with each profile within that billing group or select specific billing groups here. 
Next is scheduling. For Shopify, you'll want to make use of scheduling to make sure that your tasks are set to start right at the time of the release. For example, if I was going for a drop on Kif that dropped at 11 a.m., I might set the time up to 10.59.55 so that it will just start right before the release, five seconds before the release. You might want to use this because you don't want your delays to be spamming the site before the item drops as you might get your tasks banned. So you want to use the scheduling option to be able to have your tasks just start right before the release. Finally, it's quantity. This is how many tasks you'll create. Remember that it will create a task here for however many billing profiles you've selected. So if I select five billing profiles here and select the quantity to five, I'll be creating 25 tasks in total. Once you've created some tasks, you'll want to open some capture harvesters for your captures to be sent to during the release. I won't go into full detail here about the captures tab as it has a dedicated video. But usually you want to open both a checkpoint solver and a normal v2 solver. This allows you to differentiate the checkpoints and the checkout captures. So the checkpoints being sent to checkpoint harvester and then the checkout captures being sent to the v2 solver. This allows you to prioritize the v2 solver captures when they get there because these are tasks that are about to check out. Then otherwise you can be solving the checkpoint captures to get the tasks into the queue. As I mentioned earlier, you may also want to open a question solver for sites such as Eric Emanuel and Haven. This is where the question will appear if they require one and you'll be able to answer and submit it here. Once you've created tasks and opened your capture harvesters, you're ready to start them. To start an individual task, click the green button to the right of it and then to stop it, click the blue pause button. You can also do this for all tasks at the top using the start all and stop all buttons. To edit an individual task, click the grey edit button located to the right. This will bring up the task editor where you can change aspects of that task. To delete a single task, click the red trash icon to the right. You can edit all tasks within a task group using the edit all button. This will apply to all tasks that you've currently created. You can clear all tasks within this group using the clear all tasks button. You can also rename the task group at the top using the white pencil icon or delete the entire group using the red trash icon. You can import and export this entire task group, exporting all tasks within this task group as a file to your desktop, which you can then import on another machine. You can also make use of the search function to narrow down results, searching by product, proxy list, status, etc. You can also make use of some right click and keyboard functions to control tasks. Right click on a task group in the left hand pane to start, stop or edit all tasks within it. You can also duplicate the group and delete the entire group. You can also use your mouse to select multiple tasks and then control them with a right click. So drag down on the task you want to select, then you can right click to start, stop, edit, duplicate or delete those tasks. You can also make use of control to select single tasks. So hold control and click say the top and bottom tasks to just select those two tasks. You can also use shift to make a selection. So hold on one task, hold shift and then click another task and that selects all tasks in between it. The final thing you might want to make use of for Shopify is the pop out delay window. Click F2 on your keyboard to bring out the pop out delay window. This will allow you to edit and then save delays for either all groups or different task groups at once. Simply use the plus and minus icons to change the delays or type into the fields if you have specific delays and then hit save when you want to apply them to tasks. I'm sorry that this video has been quite long but it should have covered most things to do with Shopify. If you have anything else feel free to open a ticket in the discord and someone from the support team will be more than happy to help.